Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Tim Moreland. Uh, I'm here with Derek Fulden, uh, presenting a, a webinar for the new asset management portal. Uh, very excited to get this started um, and basically to open it up to uh, the whole development community. Uh, we have been working with two, two of the larger management companies within the state, and I've had 100, over 100 projects submitted and have uh, uploaded audits. Um, so we're pretty confident uh, in getting this going and uh, very excited to start receiving information from everybody. So uh, I'm going to be doing most of the talking. Uh, Derek is kind of manning the, the computer and, and such, so uh, we'll get this moving. Um, the first thing we're going to do is go into the portal itself. And as you probably know or should know, uh, you can use you'll, you'll be using the username and password of your COL account to get into the portal. Um, you're able to assign users within that COL account um, if you want to give out different projects to different managers um, in order them for them to submit the information. So go ahead and. As you can see, when you log in, uh, hopefully your, all of your projects are listed. Um, we currently have four projects in our test area. Uh, different ways of, of searching your projects. Uh, you can do it by name, project ID, which is basically the project number, um, then address. You can pop in an address, uh, city, and it will it'll locate or search, search that criteria or search those projects. Um, we also have some check boxes, um, obviously ones that haven't submitted, projects that are either TCAP or 1602. Um, obviously most of, the, most of the projects that we'll be dealing with are not TCAP and 1602, but those projects are certainly uh, very important as there's certainly more requirements in, uh, involved with those two, project, two, two, two types of projects. Um, so first we'll go into, um, a test project, that first one, please. And you will see um, two things we're asking for to be submitted, the occupancy data and the financial data. Uh, first, we'll go into the occupancy data. And this is simply just, we're just asking for the occupancy uh, number at the end of the month. Um, and as you can see, the last 12 months are shown here. You will only be able to enter the number of units starting in January of 2014. Um, as you can see with the blue question marks, uh, that's kind of that's our help um, for each each data point. So basically, you can just enter. And obviously, for this test project, there's 60 units. So you would not be able to enter more than 60 units. Um, and basically just enter, uh, tab, and you can complete through August of 2014. For occupancy data, we ask uh, that you submit the data within two weeks of the end of the quarter. Um, it's basically currently what you're doing now on, on all tax credit projects, hopefully. Um, so we're trying to stay in line with that. Um, as you can see, there, there threw in 65 units on May 31st, 2014, and a red pop-up showed up. I can see cannot be more than total units. So there's a few of those. Um, hopefully, it's pretty self self-explanatory. Um, next, we'll go into. And as you see, everything's saved. Um, certainly, you want to make sure everything's saved uh, when you get once you get everything entered. So, next, we'll go into the financial data. And basically, this information is coming from your your audit, your most recent audit. And we have a, a kind of a dummy audit that we're using to to plug in information. Um, and we'll go through each each item. The first item is the replacement reserve balance. We're looking for this is for 2013. So we're looking for the 
fiscal year ending balance. And as you can see, it's located on the balance sheet, uh, the replacement reserves and the operating reserve. So we'll plug in those numbers, the 81,487 and the 241,634 for the operating reserve. And certainly, you can pan over the, the question, and it will show you what, what we're really needing in there. Uh, but hopefully, it's pretty self-explanatory going through these. We try to make this as simple as possible, um, not asking too much information um, to make it too complicated. Uh, the next item, total revenue. We're looking for, and this will be shown up on the next page. Um, Basically, basically, this is the total revenue minus the vacancies. Um, on this audit, it's pretty easy to see what we're looking for here. Um, the 495-578 number. The next data point is the total expenses. Um, there again, on this particular audit, it's pretty easy to see what we're looking for here. Um, this is the total expenses. Um, the next three, uh, the interest, depreciation, and amortization, if those three expenses are included, in your total expense, we need to have those listed as well because we just want those those expenses separated from that that total expense. So if they are not, uh, we ask that you just enter zero for those three data points. Can you go back to the total? And as you can see, we have zero in for those three. Um, and certainly the help there will hopefully help describe what we're, what we're wanting there. So um, as we know, each audit's a little bit different. Um, this audit was maybe a little more simpler than, than some, um, but hopefully not too much work on your end to get those entered. Um, the next data point, uh, the current year deposits to replacement reserves, basically just looking for the total annual deposits um, for the year. Um, this can include interest. Um, obviously, most of these accounts are pretty small, so the interest is pretty small. So whether you include it or not, it's not that big a deal. Um, but this, should, this information should be shown on your notes um, towards the end of your audit. And Derek will show you kind of where it is on this audit. Um, they kind of swell out the current balance at the beginning of the year, then they add the, the card deposits as well as the interest earned, as well as the withdrawals. Um, so we're looking for the, the current required deposits, and you can also add the interest earned. Um, so we're looking for it uh, at a total of 16,754 to be entered in this, in this data point. And the last one, uh, must pay debt service. Um, we're just looking for uh, the debt service that is required to be paid. Um, I'll start to go back to the audit. Um, this we also found in your notes. Um, for this particular project, there's actual four notes. Three of them are required um, to be paid. And one is basically kind of a somewhat of a cash flow type note. Um, the first one normally is shown as your first mortgage. Um, hopefully, the, or normally I would say that is going to be required. Uh, for this particular project, uh, it shows the monthly payments. So basically, you just multiply the 5339 times 12 to get to the 64,068. 
And then for the next two, or those are just annual payments. So you basically just add those two payments together. So for a total of 93,260, um, which is the total required debt service for that year. So with that, we're, we're done entering on the financial data page. Uh, please make sure you save. Um, it will take you back to this page. Um, and, and basically the last thing that we asked you to do um, is upload that audit that you're using to enter uh, the financial data. Uh, the first thing you want to do is select the document type. Uh, in this particular instance, would be annual audit. Um, can you pull that back up again, please? As you can see, there's there's four other items, and those four other items are the requirements of the TCAP and 1602 projects. Um, so for most of you, um, you only need to select the annual audit. Um, so with the annual audit selected. We ask that you put a title in of the project name and then the year and then just audit. Um, for the effective date, we ask that you put in the very the, the last day of your fiscal year. So for this particular project it was 1231-2013. And then to actually upload that document. Um, you can select, which is basically browsing your desktop. Um, and for this one, we don't have it saved. Um, but anyway, it should show up as an upload, and then you basically just upload that document. And that document should be shown there um, as being uploaded. And basically, that's what we're looking for. Um, for the financial data, most of the loan docs are going to ask that you submit that information or upload that information within 30 days of the audit completion. Um, as we know, audits get finished throughout the year. Um, we're certainly going to be flexible in getting those those audits, getting that information uploaded. Um, but that's kind of what we're expecting um, to be sent. Um, I believe there's. Uh, I believe all the lines are unmuted. So you can ask a question. I think we might have one question now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's actually going to be one of the things. That Is there a question by anyone? One, anyone right now? Be nice okay. if you should have this at home. Um, How often these are required to be uploaded? Okay, I, I guess there's no questions currently. Um, certainly, uh, myself or Derek can be contacted via email or phone if there are any questions uh, in regards to these medals. Um, we certainly appreciate uh, everyone joining in on this webinar, and hopefully it was helpful. Um, but hopefully it's pretty straightforward for everyone. Um, and if it isn't, certainly please give us a call or send us an email and we'll respond um, as quickly as possible. Um, Derek, do you have any, anything else to comment? Um, I think that basically ends our, our webinar for today. Uh, I appreciate everyone's uh, attending and uh, 
look forward to receiving your project data soon. Thank you.